Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time ever watching a video of mine, hello, my name is Lande, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about my 20 must have products. And this is just out of my collection, and these are the products that I find myself reaching for, especially like lip products, and just products that I reach for. And I feel like if you are looking for something new to try out, these would be perfect. Now these are going to be very uh, brown girl friendly, <laughs> but even if you aren't a brown girl and you're watching this video, you can still try out these products because nonetheless, it's still, it's still a general product. So I hope you guys enjoy and make sure you subscribe before you go, tap the notification bell, and then let's roll the intro. So lipstick never fails to be on my teeth. But my first product, I'm gonna start with my complexion products. Just It's just right here. Uh, the first product is going to be the Pat McGrath Sublime Foundation. Now, when I first tried out this foundation, I was not a big fan of it. I felt like it was too liquidy. Um, th this color didn't match me like 100%, but you know, now that I've used it over time and I've gradually used it, I really like this foundation. I find that the liquidiness um, allows me to not use as much product and it also gives me a natural finish. This foundation also photographs really, really well. Like when I take pictures wearing this foundation, I feel flawless, I look flawless, like everything comes together and everything looks really great. So that is the why this is like one of my foundations or my favorite products that I feel like everyone should try if it's within your budget. This is an expensive foundation. I think it was like 60, 60 something dollars. So it is a splurge. It's a splurge and it's probably something that you wouldn't want to wear every day. But I feel like it's, it's high end. It has really great products in it. It's good for your skin or good ingredients in it. It's good for your skin. It's definitely something that's worth it. But I'm telling y'all, this foundation is bomb. The next foundation is way, way, way more affordable. This is the ColourPop No Filter Foundation. This is in the liquid formula. I prefer the liquid over the foundation stick. I do love me a good foundation stick. Like at one point I was so obsessed with foundation sticks, but this foundation is just something about it. It lightweight, it blends in, it, it photographs really, really, really well as well. Both of these foundations that I've just talked about photograph really well and I found that over time, like in using other products and other foundations, like these two are definitely the best. This I think is 12 bucks, so it's way less expensive. So if you're not able to buy the Pat McGrath, then definitely try out the ColourPop. I think you can only get the foundation online, so it will be a bit of a stretch to find a good shade. Right now I'm mixing two shades, but I think my perfect shade is 190. So if you're anywhere within my skin tone range, definitely give this foundation a try. Give both of these foundations a try if you can. I'm sure you can go to Sephora and get a sample of this, and that way you can try it if you do have a Sephora nearby. But both of these foundations are bomb.com and definitely worth the buy. So I also have two concealers, both on opposite ends of the spectrum. The first one is the Benefit Cakeless Boing Concealer. Now, Benefit is one of those brands where I feel like their complexion products have always lacked, especially especially back in the day. I remember actually buying their Boing concealer to carve out underneath of my brow because it was really raved about, hyped about, and their darkest shade was like, like, white girl. <laughs> and I still used it. And I actually really did like that concealer, but they finally extended their shade range when they came out with this concealer. And this concealer is the bomb. Like it is it just highlights me so beautifully. It blends out its full coverage, but it doesn't feel super cakey. Like this concealer is the bomb. It's so beautiful. This is shade number nine. They did send eight, nine, and 10. Eight is way too light. 10 is personally for me too dark, but that's just a personal aspect of things. <laughs> Um, but none, nonetheless, this concealer is beautiful. I won't use this to prime my lids though. I found that I don't like it to prime my lids um, unless I'm doing like a look like I did today where it's not like too intricate and things like that. But I will use it under my eye and baby, it gives me, it gets your girl all the way together. So next is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This concealer is the bomb. I actually need a new one I use. 
um, D46, D42, and D40. Like I just kind of will mix and match and just use one one day. It depends on how I'm feeling. It depends on how bright I want my under eye or how I want my brow bone to look. It all just depends on how I'm feeling, but this is so inexpensive. I think it's six bucks that three of them, it doesn't break my bank and it's such a good concealer. It's lightweight, full coverage. Like that is my formula for a good concealer, lightweight but full coverage. And then it has to be kind of more neutral as opposed to more golden or more yellow. I like a little more neutral um, concealer just because I don't want it to be like too golden under the eyes. Sometimes like my LA Girl Concealer and Fawn is a little too yellowy golden and I just, sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't. So sometimes I'm like, nah. <laughs> but this concealer is really great, inexpensive and it's you know, if you don't want to buy the Benefit one, you can definitely try out the ColourPop one. Both of these are definitely must-have concealers. They're the bomb. So next is primer. This is the Milk Makeup Gripping Primer. This is the Hydro Grip Primer. This came out about a year or so ago, and it took me quite some time to, like, actually try it out. They had sent it to me in PR, and I was just like, ah, eh, like, kind of like, eh, whatever. And then I kept seeing a whole bunch of people talk about it and rave about it, and I'm like, let me whip that, let me whip it out. It's kind of like... I really like gel water-based moisturizers. That's my jam. My Vichy, um, my Vichy water gel cream is like no other. It's expensive, but it's so good. It's so, so good. And that's what this reminds me of. It just has that light weight water kind of consistency, but it also has that grip to it where it can grip into your foundation and make sure that it stays on all day. Now, personally, I don't suffer from my foundation, um, wearing or rubbing off or like like oiling off i don't suffer from that so i don't have too much experience on how it'll help that stay on but for me it does me and my skin type really good i'm usually pretty dry around the outer edge and then just oily right here in the nose and right above the eyebrows but other than that i'm pretty i'm pretty normal and this is this is this is the bomb it's about so I'm going to flip over to setting spray. I mentioned this in this look that you see here, uh, that this is like my favorite setting spray. It's so freaking good. Okay, it's worth the hype. I remember seeing Jaclyn Hill talk about it, and I was just like, oh, okay, like next time I go to Ulta, I'll try it out. And then when I tried it out, it was such a fine mist. It just mists your makeup, and it sets it, it locks it in place, and it doesn't sputtle or spray like it's not like a like a jerking kind of motion it's just a fine mist and it's it's the bomb especially when you're working with like matte eyeshadows i like to use something like this because it's not gonna like have like sputtles of of wetness like it's just such a fine mist that it doesn't like alter the eyeshadow whatsoever so for me this is always my go-to i literally buy one every single time i go into ulta Usually I'm going into Ulta to buy this and I need to get to the point where I just pick up like two or three, but I think they're like 18 bucks and anybody got coins for that, okay? But I need to like have just a stock of them in my closet. Like I just need like a big ass box full of these and I will be 100% okay. <laughs> this is literally the setting spray that I use. I have other setting sprays and I'll like dibby and dabble in them, but most of the time like what I'm talking about is what I'm using because it's so great and it looks so good on me and on camera. So setting powder, I don't use this one too often um, because I'm running out, but this is the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Spray in yellow. And this powder is so fine, like it's such a fine silky powder and it just applies so flawless. Like I really, really love this, this powder. It's, excuse me, it's not too expensive either, so you don't have to worry about breaking the bank, but it's definitely something that I would recommend you try out if you're in the in the game for a new setting powder. It's fine, it sets it, doesn't crease anywhere, like it just does its job. Um, and it's also black woman owned because, yes. <laughs> so for blush, this baby is my blush. Like me and toasted almond go together like peanut butter and jelly. It looks so good on my skin, especially after I've contoured and highlighted. It doesn't give a lot of color, okay? And we'll make sure to mention that. It does not give you a ton of color. So if you are one that likes 
a bright blush. It's not going to do that. It's very muted. It's very soft. It's very gives you that flush, but not over flush. It makes it look like you're like, <laughs> you know, but you're not, you know, like super beet red. It's such a good blush. It's just it's just such a good color and I've had this for I don't even know how long like y'all the top ain't even on this I don't even know how long I've had this and it just never does me wrong it just it keeps me blushing okay finally for the face oh okay okay eyelash is my um, dose of colors Desi Katie highlighter in mid -A -May. now this highlighter is the one that I'm wearing now it's the one that usually when you see me wearing it's this one it's either this one or Colourpop's Bay Area one of the two is it's usually one of those two and it looks so good on me now I understand that highlighters are subjective because some people might not like something a little more frosty like this some people might like something a little more golden like um, the Marc Jacobs Omega Glaze and Guilty now that one's definitely more golden but lately I've been going away from that I go and I'm like um I'm like fashion I go in cycles okay so sometimes I like a more golden highlighter sometimes I like a more uh, just like golden frosty highlighter sometimes I like a like something like this like it just depends on my mood it depends on the makeup look it just depends on everything and that just determines whether or not I'm wearing what I'm wearing but nonetheless this baby is always in my collection since I got this NPR a year or two ago it's always been in rotation it's always done me good and I've always loved it. I don't know. Did I love it in the review? I can't remember if I loved it in the review. I think I liked Chasing the Sun in the review more than this one because this one was lighter and frostier. And I didn't think it was best for women of color, which I still don't really think it's best for women of color unless you're like me and you like this kind of look. But it looks really good on me. So it's subjective. So do what you do with it. Take away what you want to take away. <laughs> So I'm going to move on to the brows because I do have a lot of lip products and then I have two palettes that I wanted to mention. Um, the first brow product that is a must have, especially if you like a more natural brow, is the Benefit Cabrow Pencil. This pencil is so, so good. It's a little expensive. I think it's like 18 to 26 bucks or something. It's something like that, but it's a really, really good pencil. It has a fine point to it so you can really do like hair like strokes and brush it in and give your brows a nice kind of like bushy like appearance um, I really like doing it in the front of the brow especially after I've done my entire foundation routine I do the front of the brow and just give it like hair like strokes but this pencil is really good I'm in the shade number five and then the covergirl easy breezy brow baby this is in the shade medium um, I do have the dark one and the dark one I feel like it was good for when I liked my brows darker, but lately I've been liking them a little lighter, a little, a little more like one B natural, and I've been liking brushing my eyebrow hairs up to give it a bushier kind of more natural appearance. I feel like that looks really, really good. So I've been using this product, and sometimes I'll use this, and sometimes I'll use my Gimme Brow. Both of them do the same thing, whereas they set the brow, they have fibers in it where it makes it appear. Like if I didn't have on makeup and I wanted to just run this through the brow, it'll give it that fuller appearance with the fibers. But I'm most of the time using this and I'll just brush it through. I'll brush it through. Like I think I brushed through like three times and just make sure everything's in place. Everything's locked in place and they don't be moving. And I love how my brows have been looking lately. I go, um, I haven't gone to get them threaded in probably like two, three weeks because they be fucking my shit up and at this point I'm pretty much just tweezing my own brows because brows are one thing maybe you just can't be trusting everybody with and they were just so ugly for the longest time I felt and I feel like I'm finally at a point where they're, they're doing me good so both of those products are really really good so I have one mascara and one mascara only of the other mascara the other mascaras that I have in my little like caddy thing are some that I just kind of like rotate through but this is always the staple this is always the one that stays the constant the constant the constant the constant whatever it stays this is the um, superhero mascara by its cosmetics now I don't use a lot of it cosmetics 
but I got this I think two years ago when I went to New York for the we love makeup event with L'Oreal and I got this in a goodie bag and I tried it out and I didn't like it on my upper lashes but I loved it on my bottom lashes it is so black like literally I have no other mascara that is as black as this one and as you can see the wand isn't anything spectacular it's just a small bristled a short bristled tight brush but the color I love how black it is I love that it grips my lower lashes like it makes my lower lashes look so good and I literally haven't used anything else on my lower lash line for the past two years not it not even kidding like nothing nothing like this just is my staple some of the brushes I feel like are too big for my lower lashes and this one is just always the one that I keep so I'm not done with this one but when I am I'm definitely gonna be spending 20 something dollars to, to get me a new mascara because it's just that good and mascara I feel like once you find a mascara that you really love and you will wear all the time it's definitely something worth splurging on I feel like mascara and brows are something that is it's worth the splurge so moving on to palettes I have two palettes that are always in rotation the first one is the morphe 3502 palette it's the palette that's on my eyes and it is definitely the palette that gets used the most this palette when it came out I remember Jaclyn Hill talking about it on her snapchat that's when snapchat was still a thing before Rihanna said mm -mm, not today um, and she was just like, you guys are going to love this palette. She showed it and I was just like in awe because I love neutral warm shades. And that is what this palette is. It's a warm neutral palette. It has a row of deep dark browns. It does, did have a black but mine broke out. Um, and then it has the warmer orangey reddish, reddish shades in here. It's a mix of shimmers and mattes. So I literally can get so many looks out of this palette with just the neutrals. And I love that. I love that. This is a palette that I whip out when I'm doing clients. I know I'll always have a transition shade and a crease shade that'll work for any and every skin tone. It's just such a beautiful palette. And I think it's like 24 bucks or something like that. Um, An honorary mention is the 3503 palette. I've been loving that palette as well. That one has a little more color. Uh, it has like the greens and the and the oranges and the pinks and the reds so a little more color than this one does this one's still in that warm kind of skin tone or warm shade range but it's so good and the second palette is the morphe uh times james charles palette now we all know he is a mess <laughs> but this palette was genius this palette was what everybody was wanting and nobody was creating it is a colorful palette so I know that whenever I need to use some color, color I can whip out this palette and this palette will most likely have the color. It also has the middle row of neutrals. So you have brown, you have black, you have your nude and your white and everything. And then on both sides you have shades that you can create endless looks with. Like you have a quad of green, you have a quad of blues, you have a quad of purples and a quad of um, purple pink. And then at the top you get a little more kind of like wearable everyday kind of looks and then you get the colors you get the quad of oranges and then you get more once again neutral or light shades to do more everyday kind of looks so that is why I love this palette it's because you can do whatever and and just so many different looks with it and get away with just you know good quality um um eyeshadow looks Another honorary mention is my Jackie Ina palette. I was going to whip that out because that palette is also a really good staple. It was created by us, for us, so or for us, by us. Yeah, that's boo-boo. For us, by us. So that is always going to be a staple of mine. That is always going to be a recommend, 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 recommendation of mine. <laughs> um, but that's another good palette. So I'm going to move on to the lips. I have three lipsticks and I have um, a couple of lip, liquid lipsticks and some lip glosses. All of them are in the nude family because, you know what, I used to really love doing colored lips and just being crazy and out there. But as I've gotten older, I'm only 25, but I just can't be bothered. Like, I just can't be bothered with colored lips unless I'm just doing like a mauve kind of purpley pink. But other than that... 
no, nah, not really, sis. Like, I'm just, give me nude and I'll be good. So, and I don't feel bad anymore because I used to feel bad that I wasn't switching up my lip colors, but literally, I'm Rezzy only wears nude lipsticks with every single look and she got like 10 million followers. So, I know it's okay. So, I'm just like, girl, do you, Lon? So, the first two lipsticks are from CoverGirl. And these are the lipsticks that I would wear with a look like this. Um, well, I usually do wear with a lip like, or a look like this. These are the neutral browns. So this one right here is called Trending. It's a demi matte. And when I first wore this color, this lip, this look, I had used this around the outer edge. And then I took Tempting Toffee and put this right in the center. But most of the time I wear Tempting Toffee because it's a little lighter and I just put it right in the middle. This one is a cream, so it's going to give it kind of like a shine, kind of like what I have right now going on. But nonetheless, both of these lip colors are really, really, really nice. They are very comfortable to wear, and they last just as long as any other cream or a demi matte lipstick. Now, this one um, trending as a demi matte. I'm not sure if you can find these in store because I don't go to Walgreens or Walmart or anything like that too often. But this did get sent to me in PR about a year ago. And this was one of the two shades that I was just like, yeah, like that's, that's, that's that. That's that. Literally, that's that. So both of those. And then my last lipstick is the lipstick that I'm wearing now. It's the Jaclyn Hill um, lipstick in the shade Decaf, which looks like this. And literally, it's just such a good, cool tone brown it's very cool tone and it just applies so nicely like i was saying it in the video that i wore this makeup look in i didn't have any issues with this lipstick um it applies really nice it's not lumpy or clumpy or anything like that and it does me great so decaf is definitely my favorite i don't even think she sells these lipsticks anymore because it was such a fiasco but it's still my staple and I'm not going to be shamed into not wearing my favorite staple lipstick because other people had issues and problems with it and that's, that's, it, it was a sad situation. I, it was a sad situation and the fact that she's still dealing with the, the backlash, it's just even more sad. I just, it, it just sucks. I can imagine, but it sucks. So I'm going to talk about my one and only lip gloss that I busted out. This is ColourPop's lip gloss in Fantasia. This baby right here is the best nude gloss. Now I will say it's a little sheer, so I wear it over top of a lipstick as I do with most of my lip glosses because most of them, most of them are sheer. Uh, I had you have some that are actually like you don't need nothing under those um but this one is a little sheer i did pick this up at ulta i'm not sure if they have it on the website but i'm sure they do but this one is like a light kind of nude pink it's got some gold reflects in it and it just looks so so good it, it just with a brown lip liner and a lipstick underneath it just it's just the perfect pairing um and it's just so good so definitely a recommendation if you are in the mood for a new gloss a new nude gloss check out Fantasia from Colourpop so I'm just gonna bounce over to um, the lip liner this is the uh, Shayla Colourpop lip liner in BFF number four it is the perfect brown lip liner it's once again what I have on my lips right now it never does me wrong it's always in rotation I am always using this lip liner I will flip through um, like the kiss one or the Nade cosmetics one but this one is the one that I use probably the most and it, it's so good. It's so smooth and it doesn't skip or it's easy to sharp. Like some of the other pencils are a little harder to sharpen and a little harder to, to use and sometimes skip or drag. But this one, this is a good one. So now I'm going to talk about liquid lipsticks and then that is going to be it. So the first one is Dose of Colors Liquid Lipstick and Knock on Wood. This is a, once again, nude as you know. Um, I don't like peachy nudes too much. This one's a little more like brownie kind of nude. Um, that's what it looks like on my skin. Um, a little more brownie pinky. And it's so cute. It looks so good on my skin, like on my lips with a brown lip liner. I think, yeah, this is the one that I wore for my wedding and I had no, no complaints, no problem at all. 
and it looked so, so, so good. Um, the next one was the runner up for my wedding. This is ABH Starfish and this one about the same color, um, about the same like shade. This one is Starfish, a little darker, which is, I think I had done a video. Yeah, I did a makeup video and I had used, or a makeup wedding trial video and I had used Knock on Wood with Cork because I used Cork first and then I put Knock on Wood in the center. And at that point, I had already had it in my mind that I was going to use Starfish because I was using this matte nude liquid, liquid, liquid lipstick and it was doing me so much justice. And then I tried out Knock on Wood with Cork and I was just like, no, that's, that's my wedding color. So I ended up going with this one as opposed to this one because it's a little lighter and it just looked better. Um, and then last but not least is my Day Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick and Sunkiss. This is probably the lightest of the three, I think it is, and um, this one looks so, so good with a matte brown lip liner. Like, that's this one right here. It's very similar to Cork, um, but, or Knock on Wood, it's very similar, but these three liquid lipsticks for nude matte brown liquid lipsticks are my favorite out of all of the ones that I have in my collection and I'm sure I have a crap ton more my honorary mention would be knock on wood it's a little darker than the three of these um and definitely makes for a better like outer edge so what I mean by outer edge is I would apply my lip liner and then I'd apply a cork and just smack it out and then I'd apply just a tiny bit of like one of these three shades in the center um just to give that light lightest kind of color effect but these three are my go-to babies and yeah they're so good they're so 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 good and they're so different all of them are so different so you guys that completes my 20 i think it ended up being like 21 must have products uh, this is these are products that i would recommend to anyone everyone products that you know that I use and love if you watch my videos. It's just products that I feel like everyone should have in their collection if they can afford it. So let me know what your must have products are even if you tell me like your top five must have products. I'm always in the in the search for new products. Um, I don't have like a lot of like Huda Beauty I need to try and like there are some other products that I still want to try but for right now these products do me good and they get me snatched, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the fam. And I think that's it. So yeah, if you wanna see this makeup look, it'll be at the end of this video and I'll see you soon.